welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I want to say this program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. I want to thank the Major family so much for their support. They became Patreon sponsors at the uh, at the detective sergeant level of uh, $7.14 or more. And uh, you can support the show on a monthly ongoing basis at patreon.greatdetectives.net. I also want to thank Sandra uh, for uh, sending along a donation via uh, our P.O. Box. Uh, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. And you can also support us on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for uh, today's episode of Richard Diamond. The original air date, uh, July the 23rd, 1949. And the title is The Martin Hire Frame-Up Case. <laughs> Here's Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Hello there, this is Diamond. About the most strenuous effort I might give out during a working year is maybe chasing some thug up the escalator at Bloomingdale's department store. But last week, I really outdid myself. The all-stars of the police force challenged the private detectives to a baseball game for the benefit of the vice squad. And I wound up stiffer than a pair of starched overalls. Because the private detectives are quick to take advantage of the slightest opportunity, by the eighth inning, we realized the need for some immediate strategy. The score at that point was six to four, the cops leading. So I got a hold of a little blonde I knew and had her walk across the infield in a sweater. The idea was to disturb the opposing team and take their minds off the game. It would have worked, but it seemed that since I had last seen my little blonde friend, she'd become quite a favorite with the police force, so they just waved hello and went about their business. My drooling colleagues, however, had not come in contact with said hunk of fluff, and before the game was over, three of them had picked up the bat boy and tried to bunt with him. You may have read where the police force finally beat us, Close game, 37 to 4. But I want to say right here and now, they never could have done it without that sweater. And oh, yeah, I got mixed up in a little honest murder the next day. It all started in the back booth of a middle-class nightclub. A couple of people were busy trying to think up the fastest way to make a homicide billiard. Oh, uh, that's the three-cushion variety. Killing to frame up to the electric chair. Leon, are you sure this will work? You want to get rid of that old man of yours, don't you? You know I do. Well, I got a wife that I want to dump, too. This letter from her is going to fix it so we both end up very unmarried. Are you sure they'll blame it on Martin? Sure, I'm sure. When they find him with this letter and his own gun and the dead body of my dear little wife, they'll slap him in the chair so fast he won't know what happened. Who's going to find him with the body? That's your job, baby. I'll get the letter to your husband and you swipe his gun and get it to me. And you go get yourself a private detective and tell the shamus that you suspect your husband of running around with another girl. You and the shamus tail your husband. I'll have a time so you catch him with the goods right after the killing. Well, all right. I hope it works. It will if you want it to, baby. I want it to. Because I want you. Yeah. Yeah, and all that nice money your husband's going to leave you. Leon. Come in, you. Yeah. Come in. Mr. Diamond? That's right. 
I want to hire a private detective. Well, good for you. Sit down. Thank you. What is your fee? Hmm? What's the matter? Oh, stand up and sit down again. They're 52 gauge, Mr. Diamond. Like them? Oh, you'd look good if they were sweat socks. I don't think they'd go with a high heel. Uh, you've got a point. Now, uh, <clears throat> what were you saying? I wanted to know what your fee is. Oh, a hundred a day in expenses. Uh, isn't that a little high? I stopped eating at the automat six years ago. All right, I'll give you a retainer. Oh, uh, wait a minute now, wait a minute. What's the job? I think my husband is running around with another woman. Uh, what do you want me to do, hustle him off to the nut house? Oh, aren't you nice? I want you to go with me as a witness. You know, uh, any other time I might get shy, but I'm really interested in seeing a girl who could beat your time. Hmm. When do I start? Meet me in front of my house at 10 minutes to 8. My husband leaves around 8. What's the address? 521 East 58th Street. My name is Hires, Mr. Diamond. Uh, June Hires. All right, June. I'll see you at 10 to 8. Now, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but about that retainer. Oh, yes, that. Um, here's $100. Is that enough? Uh, it'll keep me interested. What's your husband's name? Martin. I'll see you this evening, Mr. Diamond. Oh, uh, one more question. Yes? Why haven't you and your husband been getting along? Uh-huh. Oh, a lot of reasons. By the way, Mr. Diamond, how old are you? Hmm? No, oh, oh, well, I'm frisky, but I passed the foolish mark when I was three and a half. <laughs> Did you? Goodbye, Mr. Diamond. I wonder if I did. Diamond Detective Agency, with men who know the corpses best, it's Diamond, two to one. Rick. Oh, oh, Helen. Hello, baby. What are you doing? Uh, what gauge nylons do you wear, dear? 52. Why? No, nothing. Oh, Rick, are you going to buy me a present? Oh, you never can tell. I was just looking at a pair a few minutes ago. Rick. Yeah? Where were you looking at them? Uh, what kind of a question is that? A very good question. Have you got a girl up in that office? Helen. Don't you, Helen, me, have you? Well, I give you my word, I haven't. All right, was there a girl in your office? The, the, was the, there? Well, a client. I got a hundred dollar retainer. I don't I... care if she gave you the George Washington Bridge. You were obviously looking at her leg. Well, I couldn't help it. She sat on that way. Now, look, honey, she's just another client. Mm-hmm, with 52 gauge nylons. But you do count the threads. Oh, can you do that? Oh, you. Wolf. Yeah, but you're the only one who gets the benefit of my talents. You can put the soft soap away. Oh, uh, I got some business at eight. I'll, I'll be over later. Well, I'm going to stay mad until you get here. And you're going to tell me all about those nylons. I'll be sure and do some research. Bye. Well, there you are. You sit around and wait for a meal ticket to come in, and just because it happens to be fitted with curves... Your best girl digs up the green-eyed monster. I don't know why gals get sore at a guy just because they catch him panting a little. <laughs> After all, it's hot in New York. I spent the rest of the afternoon trying to hit a big horse fly with a rubber band and some paper clips. And by six o'clock, we shook hands and called it a draw. I closed the office and went home. I got into some clean clothes and grabbed a bite to eat at the corner drugstore. At ten minutes to eight, I was sitting in June Hire's car parked across the street from her front door. Mr. Diamond, how did you ever get to be a private detective? Uh, Mrs. Hyam, how did you ever get to be a housewife? You think things up in a hurry, don't you? Only when I got competition. You like competition? Uh, yeah, up to a point. After that, I get tired of the struggle. <laughs> I feel like I was back in college, sitting in a parked car with a good-looking man. Your education must have been pretty tame. I haven't moved once. Well, I really started to study after I graduated. Oh, I bet you got straight A's. Must you top everything? I play around with a lot of trouble, Mrs. High, and I've got to stay one step ahead of it. Do I look like trouble? When's your husband coming out of that house? Any minute now. You didn't answer my question. I'll tell you as soon as I see your husband. Well, how will that tell you? Well, if he's wearing a beanie with a propeller on it, I'll know you've been giving him a lot of trouble. So I've been giving him trouble. Does that mean I'll do the same for somebody else? Well, what's the difference, a husband or a private detective? They both got their names from a guy named Adam. Oh, look. A cab pulled up to the front door. Yeah, I see it. And here comes Martin. Hmm. He's getting into the cab. Well, what do you know? What's the matter? No beanie. We both sat and watched while Martin High got into the cab and it pulled away. 
Mrs. Heyer put her car in gear, and we started the tale, giving it a safe distance. He led us across town to a middle-class apartment house, and we stopped the car and waited up the street. He's getting out and going into that building. Come on. Oh, what for? Shouldn't we let him get up there first, and, and then... Look, look, baby. Do you know who, who this gal is? No, no, of course not. Well, then come on. I want to see what door he goes in. But, well, won't he see us? Honey, I don't tell you how to put your lipstick on. I don't tell me how to make it like a bloodhound. Well, the, the lobby is empty. Well, watch the elevator. Oh. It's stopping on the fourth floor. Hadn't we better go up? Look, uh, look, lover. The fourth floor probably comes equipped with a lot of doors. Now, if you want to just knock on any of them, go hire yourself Humphrey Bogart. Well, then what do we do? You stand by and watch like you... Uh, make like you knew what I was doing. See, the little old elevator's coming back down. Now, you just hold it there while I look at the mailboxes. Oh, Mrs. B. Callahan. Mrs. Lillian McEdward. Mrs. Mike. Well... And Miss Sally Maxwell. Okay, now we push the button for the fourth floor and away we go. Fun? Um, h- how do you know where to go? I got the name off the mailbox. But you said yourself there must be a lot of people on the fourth floor. Elementary, my dear girl, process of elimination. We're lucky this time. Only one single girl on the fourth floor, Sally Maxwell. Come on, it's 406. What if there'd been more than one single girl? So I make some new friends. Now stop asking questions and stick close. Mm, I'd love it. Now, here it is, 406. Now hold it down. Can you hear anything? No. Yeah, somebody's moving around. Oh? Uh Oh, Duck. What? Too late. What? June. Uh, Good evening. I represent the Great Nothing Life Insurance Company. What are you doing here, June? I might ask you the same thing. Do you mind if we come in? I'd like to interest you in our indemnity clause. Stop pushing. Get out of my way. Oh, you don't know what you're missing. You get $3 million if a python bites you in the middle of Times Square. You can't force your way in here like that. You... Oh, now you've hurt my feelings. Take your hands off me or I'll strike you again. Sure, but you need two more to put you out. Here, have one on me. (laughs) Now, the next time you go striking people... Mr. Diamond, look. I looked past the little guy and spotted the body. She was blonde, and I didn't know why she was hanging on to the rug that way. She wasn't going anywhere. All right, you. Get out of my way. Huh? Oh, what a lovely gun. Martin, you killed that girl. No, I did not. I came in here and found her like that, but I didn't kill her. She's been shot. I know that. I found the gun by her body. You don't think I'd kill her? I was in love with her. Martin. Is that the gun that did it? Yes. I mean, no. I, oh, I don't know what I mean. But you stand right there. Don't take another step. That's your gun, Martin. You shut up. I didn't kill Sally, but I know I haven't got a chance of proving it, so if you come any closer, I will most certainly shoot you. I hate to look like an idiot, but it's against the law to shoot people. Mr. Diamond, be careful. Come on, Martin. Give me the gun. You don't think I'll shoot, do you? Come on, give it to me. Just one more step. Look out, he's going to shoot. Come on, open what? up in there. What? Better drop it, Martin. You've got company. Stay back. Stay back. This is the police. Open up or we'll break the door the in. Police. Well, give me the gun, Martin. No, no. Let, yes. let him in, June. Before Levinson tears down the whole wall. I've got Martin. Yes, all right. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. What's going on in here? Hello, Walt. Hey, Lieutenant, look. It's the gumshoe. Rick, why do you guys always have to break down doors? Why don't you try turning the knob first? Otis, didn't you see if it was unlocked? Uh, I forgot, Lieutenant. You mallet head. We got a report that someone heard a shot from this apartment. There's the body, Walt. Who's this guy? Uh, Martin Heyer. Here's his gun. He was going to use it on me. I didn't kill her. I came in and found her that way. Oh, shut up. Who's the girl with you, Diamond? Uh, This is Mrs. Heyer. Martin is her husband. I don't say. The old triangle, huh, Rick? I engaged Mr. Diamond to follow my husband. That's right, Walt. We caught Martin trying to sneak out on the corpse. I told you I didn't kill her. And I told you to shut up. Is this your gun? Uh, Yes, but I found it lying by the body. I knew I'd be blamed if someone found my gun, so I put it in my pocket. Search him, Rick? Haven't had time. Shake him down, Otis. Yeah, Lieutenant. I want my lawyer, and you get away from me. You open your trap just once more. Okay, butthole. Please, Mr. Diamond, I'd like to get out of here. Sure. Okay, Walt? Yeah, but I want to talk to both of you down at the station later. Uh, Here's something, Lieutenant. What is it? Letter. Are you coming, Mr. Diamond? Uh, You go on down. I'll be right with you. Walt, what does the letter say? It says, you can't continue this way. I've decided to break it off once and for all. 
will do no good to see me, so please stay away and leave me alone. Sign Sally. Let me see that. Yeah. Well, what about it, you? Is the dead girl named Sally? Yes. I don't know why she sent it. We were both in love. Sure, sure. What were you going to do about your wife? I was going to tell her this evening. Then I received this note. I came right over to see Sally, but believe me, I didn't kill her. Tell me something, Martin. Is this the way you received the letter? Yes. Why? Now, you wait a minute, Rick. I'm very happy with what I've got, so don't start making like Sherlock Holmes. Oh, well, I, I guess you're right, Walt. He admits it's his gun, and this letter is certainly motive enough. Yeah. Otis, call for the wagon and put the cuffs on hire. Right, Lieutenant. Well, why would someone send a letter after tearing off the top of it? Huh? See, the top of this letter is missing. The part that usually reads Dear Julius or something. So what? Do me a favor, will you, Walt? Oh, what is it? Give me three minutes and then have Otis fire a shot from this apartment. What? Is that all you can say? Have Otis fire a shot in about three minutes after I leave. I will not. The police department can't go around making like it was the 4th of July. You want to solve a murder, don't you? I have solved it. What more do I need? I got a suspect, the murder weapon, and a good motive. Uh, Walt, if you'd just killed someone and a guy caught you at it, what would you do? Well, I'd knock him off, too. Well, I caught Hire in the act, and he didn't pull the trigger. Well, you said yourself he was going to. But he didn't, and he took too much time thinking about it. Walt, I can't remember hearing a shot when I came in this building. So you didn't hear a shot. Maybe you couldn't. Well, that's what I want to find out. I was right behind Martin all the way up to this apartment, and I didn't hear a shot. Maybe he didn't kill her. That's right, I didn't. Please, I didn't kill her. You see, Walt? Oh, you always start something like this. Martin, did your girlfriend Sally have any enemies? No. At least she never told me about any. Now, where are you, brain trust? Just a little more sure of myself. First, Martin can't make up his mind about shooting me. Then he claims that the murdered girl didn't have any enemies. Does that sound like a killer trying to cover up? You've run into smart killers before. I'm surprised at you, Rick. I called the station, Lieutenant. I'm proud of you. Uh, Go on in the other room and shoot that cannon of yours off when I tell you. The what, Lieutenant? You heard me. Shoot it into a mattress, but don't muffle a shot. Uh, Okay. But not till I tell you. You might think it's fun and blow up the whole building. Thanks, Walt. What are you doing? Oh, uh, just looking around this desk to see if I can find the top piece of this letter. Oh, uh... Martin, are you sure that your girlfriend didn't know anyone who might want to kill her? She never said she was in danger. But you might ask her husband. Her husband? Oh, swell. Why didn't you say something about her husband before this? You didn't ask. Oh. Who is her husband? His name's Leon Fisk. The gambler? Yes. Oh. Bye, Walt. Now, you wait a minute. Have orders start making like a Roman candle three minutes after I leave. What's that you've got in your hand? Huh? Well, it's a piece of stationery from the desk that matches the stationery this letter was written on. You can't take that letter. It's evidence. What is? That letter the murdered girl wrote to this guy. Well, how do you know she wrote it? Because this guy said so. Yes, but I'm not sure. It could be forged. See, what? Maybe she didn't write it. Well, that's why I want it. The lab will be able to tell from other samples of her handwriting. Tell what, Walt? Who wrote that letter? Well, don't you know? Of course I don't know, but we found it on this guy and it's police evidence. Why? Why? Because it just is, that's all. Well, anybody could have written it. You could have written it, Martin. Yes, I guess I could. And send it to yourself? Why would I send it to myself, Lieutenant? You wouldn't. That's why it's important. You mean the letter itself or the fact that he couldn't have sent it to himself? Both reasons. Well, if he couldn't have sent it to himself, that eliminates him as a suspect. It does? He didn't do it. Did you, Martin? No. See, Walt? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why do I always get into something like this? You asked me if I sent the letter to myself. You shut up. And you said he couldn't have. That's right, he couldn't. Then someone else did. Of course they did. Okay, then as long as you're not so sure it's important, I'm going to take it with me. Who says it's not important? Well, if he didn't send it to himself, then someone else did. And if someone else did, the murdered girl couldn't have, so anyone could have sent it. Isn't that right? Say that again. He said if I didn't send the letter to myself, then I couldn't have gotten it. No, no, no. He said you couldn't have sent the letter to... No, no, wait a minute. You couldn't have written it to... To to... myself. Yeah. So someone else wrote it and sent it to the murdered girl and... No, 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 no. Send it to me. You're crazy. I distinctly heard him say... Walt. Yeah? After you figure it out, be sure and have Otis fire that shot. I'm going to see Leon Fisk. Okay, okay. Now, let's start it again. If I didn't... If somebody didn't... If, If you didn't... If I didn't what? Lieutenant? Oh. What is the matter, Lieutenant? He did it again. And you helped him. You rat, I'll see that you get the chair even if you didn't kill her. What did I do? You shut up. (laughs) 
What took you so long? I had to get a merry-go-round started. Oh, um, can I drop you somewhere? Just relax for a second. I've got to think something out. Well, I, I didn't ever think Martin could kill anyone. Yeah. <gasps> what was that? Just, uh, just a backfire. Look, uh, drive me across town. I want to talk to a guy named Leon Fisk. Uh, Leon Fisk? Yeah, runs a nightclub with an iron claw in the back room. Uh, what's the address? Uh, 222 East 45th. I remember it because when I was on the force, I used to raid his place for exercise. Uh, thinking of doing some gambling? That's the way it'll probably end up. Let's go. She drove me across town, and ten minutes later, we pulled up in front of a low building with a flight of steps leading down to a basement door. A large sign over the door read, Cellar Club. I got out and thanked June for the lift and watched her drive off. I went down the steps and through the door. Something I can do for you? Yeah, I'd like to see Leon Fisk. Maybe you don't want to see you. What's the name? Just tell him Diamond. Okay. Uh, you got a phone booth? Yeah, right over there. Thanks. I found the phone booth and went in. In my business, you work with hunches, and sometimes they pay off. I knew that the torn letter had to be sent to someone the dead girl was going to slough. I didn't think it was higher, so the next best prospect was her husband, Leon Fisk. I didn't have a thing to pin on him, but a good bluff can open a lot of doors. I took out the letter and copied the handwriting on the other piece of stationery. I wrote the name Leon at the top, and then the words, We Can't Continue so they'd correspond with the first part of the original. Yeah? What was your writing? Oh, what's it to you? You don't have to get sore. I just thought maybe you was getting a tip on the horses, and I sure could use a winner. The nags have been beating me to death. Oh, no tip. Okay, the boss will see you. That door right over there. Thanks. Well, Diamond, it's been a long time. I haven't missed you, Leon. What brings you here? Your wife was killed tonight. Sally? One's usually the lemon. Uh, that's too bad. How did it happen? I thought maybe you could tell me. I don't know anything about it. Hmm. Ever see this letter before? Hey. Uh, what's the matter? That's your wife's handwriting, isn't it? Yeah. It uh, says, uh, Leon, we can't continue. Then the writing stopped. Well, so what? Well, the guy the police are holding got a letter from Sally, too. It started the same way, but it wasn't addressed to anyone. The top was torn off. You know what I think? No, tell me. I think she started one letter to you, then threw it away and wrote another one. I think you sent the second to Martin Haar after tearing off the name Leon. Go on, Diamond. You didn't count on her starting a second one, so you went up to her apartment and killed her with Martin's own gun. Oh, with his own gun. Uh, maybe you can tell me how I got it. Oh, no, I think so. You had to know a lot of things before you could kill your wife. What time Martin would arrive, so the time of death would be close... You had to have his gun to leave by the body, and you had to have a witness who would swear Martin killed her. It had to be time, just right. You're talking yourself into a corner. How would I get all these things? By working with someone who was close enough to Martin. Maybe like his wife. You're crazy. Am I? She just drove me to this place. So what? A lot of people know this place. She told me she didn't. So I gave her an address eight doors down, but she pulled up right in your front of your door. Well, that could happen. It was too pat, Leon. Getting me to come to her place at ten minutes to eight and knowing her husband would leave close to eight. She had to know it because that letter was delivered just before I got there. Think you can prove it? You made one mistake. I didn't hear a shot when I got to your wife's apartment. I found out later that you could hear one all the way down in the street. Your wife was killed before Martin went into that building. Probably when you saw his cab pull up. Well, anyway, it's enough to hold you on, and I think we can prove later on that you've been seeing June Hires. You're a pretty smart shamus, Damon. Oh, you mean you admit it? Okay, baby, come on in. June, come on out of there. Leon, are you crazy? Well, well, well. I didn't know you kept your back room stocked with nylons, Leon. Yeah, yeah. I guess you two don't need any introductions. Why did you have to drag me into this? You heard what Diamond said. He knows all about it. You got the car out back? Yes. But what are we going to do with him? Diamond? Well, he's going swimming with a barrel of cement. Lieutenant Levinson wouldn't like that. He knows I came here. You're lying. Wait a minute. Maybe he isn't. Diamond was upstairs with him for quite a while. Okay, so we'll have to hurry things up. Leon, you you can't shoot him. Yeah, you should know it's not polite to point. I'm not going to knock him off here in the office. We'll take him in the car and do it later. No, Leon. What do you mean, no? It was your idea to kill your wife. I just helped get the gun. 
I'm not going to be along if you kill Diamond. You're going to be right with me, baby, because you're in this up to your pretty neck, and I need that car. I'm not going to do it. Oh, yes, you are. You and Diamond go swimming together. Leon! Give me that gun. You... Let, me... Let me go. Come on, drop it. You go to the devil. June, June, come back here. I'm getting off. You got me into this mess. Come back here, you... you dirty little tramp. Don't you take that car. You're not going anywhere, Leon. You want to bet? I'll fix you, Diamond. He hit me with the butt of his gun, and I went down like the price of wheat in July. As I picked myself up, I watched him run for the back door. June! June, wait for me! You're not going to leave me here to take the rock! I got my gun out and stumbled over to the window and looked out just as the car started up. I spotted Leon with a gun in his hand. He looked mean enough to start shooting with it. He did. He started running up the alley then. I suppose I could have said something like stop or I'll shoot, but I was too tired. I just rested my arm on the window and let him have it. finally showed and cleaned things up. I was bleeding again, so I headed for 975 Park Avenue and my usual first aid station. Yes? Hello, Francis. Miss Asher in? Oh, my goodness, Mr. Diamond. Come in, sir. Come in. You've been hurt again. I guess you'll have to answer the door a little quicker after this, Francis, or build a first aid station in the hall. The usual, sir? No, you can forget the plasma, Francis. I had liver for dinner. I can stand the loss. Just as you say, sir. Miss Asher is in the study. Oh, thank you. Why don't you go to bed? You look tired. Yes. Well, good night, sir. Boo. Oh, oh. Rick. Yeah. Isn't it awful? Oh, what happened to your chin? Oh, I got it caught on a 38. Wanted to go. Want you to go? Why? Well, I thought maybe my poor little face scared you. Oh, I like your poor little mussed up face. Well, thanks, sporty. How about some music? Oh, I'm too tired. Turn on the radio. All right. Now, let me look at that chin. Oh, that's soothing. Hey, oh, shut that radio off. I'm trying to sleep. Now, what is that? Oh, it's that crabby old neighbor. Oh, it is, huh? Now, Rick, don't get mad. I'll turn it off. You want something, Max? Yeah, some sleep. Is that too much to ask? Well, stick your head in a closet. Now, look, bud. You look. That radio wouldn't wake a two-year-old. Well, just pretend I haven't stopped teething, wise guy. All I want is some sleep. Oh, you do, huh? Sleepy time, gal. You're turning night into day. Uh, Rick. Oh, that guy upsets me. All right, he upsets you. That's too pretty a song to sing like that. No. Now, you do it right or I'm going to be mad. Well, honey, then that's the last thing I want you to be. Now, Now, cuddle up on the sofa. You comfy? Mm-hmm. Don't be mad now, baby. Sleepy time, gal. You're turning night into day. Sleepy time, gal. You dance the evening away. Oh, that's wonderful. Before each silvery star fades out of sight. Please give me one little kiss. Then let us whisper good night. It's getting late, and baby, your pillow's waiting. Sleepy time, gal. When all your dancing is through. Sleepy time, gal. I'll find a cottage for you. You'll learn to cook and to sew. What's more, you'll love it, I know. When you're a stay-at-home, play-at-home, eight o'clock, sleepy time gal. Well, how was that, baby? Helen. Helen. Well, how do you like that? She snores, too. Hey, you! Max! Yeah, now what do you want? How about a game of gin? I'm lonesome. You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg. 
Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, Jay Novello, Joan Banks, and Stacey Harris. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Richard Diamond is written by Blake Edwards and directed by William P. Rousseau. Dick Powell soon will be seen in the screen version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. Now, this is Eddie King inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. This program has come to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surfer series. Oh, and a man's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Well, I have to admit that even though Diamond's uh, befuddlement of uh, Walt is completely unrealistic, I love it, so no complaints there. All right, we begin our listener comments and feedback with Dale, who said Powell was so good on radio, one of the best. And then we turn, we have got an email here. Thomas uh, writes uh, from the Major family, My family and I love old-time radio shows. Your work has been a godsend. Your apps provide great access to my favorite genre. Detective shows. I tend to skew more towards the hard-boiled stuff and really love Johnny Dollar, Dragnet, and Pack. Novak. We're a big Jack Webb fan, so I think I'm going to start in on Jeff Regan as well. I might also uh, try Johnny Madero and uh, Pete Kelly's Blues. Um, uh, really grateful for the content you uh, provide and the obvious love and care you have in doing it. Keep up the uh, great uh, work. Thanks so much, Thomas. And finally, we have an email from, or a letter actually, from Sandy. It came with a donation. Uh, these podcasts cast uh have uh saved my sanity countless times over the past few years i call my vintage ipod my sleep device my husband and i were at everest base camp last year 2015 during the massive earthquake and luckily we survived the avalanche but many did not the great detective stories kept me calm and helped with the uh altitude so please keep up the good work. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, and it's always interesting to hear where folks listen to the program. And at Everest Base Camp, certainly an interesting location. And from the websites provided, uh, looks like it was a part of an effort to fight human trafficking. So so that's great to hear. And uh, I appreciate your uh, kind comments and your support. Letters like that uh, make my week around here. That will do it for today. Be sure and listen back here for a Boston Blackie. And join us back again next uh, Wednesday for another episode of Richard Diamond. In the meantime, send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at...